everyone, I'm Sarah of Rich Textures Crochet and welcome. Today we're going to learn how to crochet the Lexington Beanie, which you can see here in front of you. This is the fourth hat in the Wonderful Hats Crochet Along that I'm hosting here on my blog. So you can find the other three hat patterns uh, here on my YouTube channel and website as well. And later on in the week we will see the matching scarf for this beautiful Lexington beanie. This crochet beanie looks wonderful with a pom-pom or without. I've worked it without today in the tutorial. Uh, it features this beautiful mosaic um, rock and tile stitch and uh, my beanie has a double thick brim, one that I can fold up just to make it a little bit warmer. So this is the beanie we're working today. It's worked from the bottom up and uh, we'll get to it in just a sec. For our pattern today, we're going to need a little bit of worsted weight yarn. I'm using the Color Theory Two of Wands yarn by Lion Brand. I'll be working in this darker green color called Peacock, as well as using this ivory and lighter white color. Uh, you're going to need not the whole ball, uh, for your beanie, probably half of the color B, maybe two-thirds of the color A, just because of the brim and the way you work your brim will affect how much yarn you need. Each ball of yarn has approximately 246 yards in it. It is a worsted weight. It's slightly on the lighter end, so if you're looking for something to substitute it with, uh, definitely look for a lighter uh, worsted weight yarn. I'm pairing it up with a 4.5 millimeter crochet hook and both of these items can be found in the description of this video. Also there in the description you'll find a direct link to the free written pattern on my blog at richtexturescrochet.com. So thank you so much for joining me. While you're here I invite you to subscribe, take a look around, keep an eye open for that matching scarf pattern later on in the week. Now as I mentioned our hat is worked from the brim up and the brim is worked in rows. We're going to start by making a slip knot and then by working a foundation chain of 26. Now this is going to make a brim that is wide enough for you to fold up. If you would like to make a shorter brim, so one that you don't have to fold, you can chain probably about 13. It's really up to you but uh, 13 will give you a nice width. So you're going to chain today to start for a fold up brim at 26 chains. And 26. Once you have your foundation chain worked, you're going to begin by working a slip stitch into the second chain from your hook. Now if you'd prefer not to work slip stitches for this brim, you can switch this to a single crochet or a half double crochet. It's really up to you. So I'm going to use slip stitches. I just like how uh, the stitches hold together and it keeps its shape I find a little bit better. So slip stitch into that second chain from your hook and then slip stitch into each chain all the way across. When you come across you're going to chain one and turn your work. At the end of your row one you're going to chain one and turn your work. We're now going to work in the back loop only. So if you take a look at the tops of your stitches, you have this loop at the top that's closest to you. That's your front loop. The one on the other side furthest away from you is your back loop. So we're going to work in the back loop only all the way across. And you're going to, after you've chained one turned, in the back loop only, you're going to slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. When you come across, chain one and turn your work. You're then going to repeat this row two, so slip stitch in each stitch 
all the way across, chain one and turn, repeat this row two until your work from the beginning measures approximately 16 to 17 inches uh, when the fabric is relaxed, so not stretched out. Uh, you can change the size of your beanie, so you can simply work to the desired length if you would like for your brim for the circumference and then uh, meet me back here and uh, we'll continue working the bottom of the hat, the body of the hat. Okay, once you have worked your brim, it should look like this. You've worked about 16 to 17 inches, uh, and uh, that's when it's laying flat like this, not stretched out. When you stretch it out, it should uh, fit comfortably around an adult head, so 21 to 23 inches, and have a good stretch to it. We're now going to fold our brim so that our two short edges meet. And we're going to crochet just a quick little seam up the side. So to work your seam, you're going to be working into the back loop only of both sides of uh, your brim. So both thicknesses, the back loop only on one, back loop only on the other, and then slip stitch. You're going to repeat that in each stitch all the way down, working in the back loop only of both thicknesses, slip stitch all the way across. Once you come all the way across your seam, you can see it right there. And that's what it looks on the front side. If you are working this double thick brim that you're going to be folding up, you're going to leave your seam so that it is on the outside. You want to leave it inside out because when you turn it up, your seam will then be hidden. If you are working a shorter brim at this point, you're going to want to turn your brim so that it's right side out and that you're working with the right side facing you. Otherwise, for the long brim, leave it as is. We're now going to work some stitches around the body of our hat, so we're going to chain one. And for our first row round, we're going to work 75 half double crochet stitches all the way around. We're simply inserting our hook where it feels most comfortable uh, into our brim, and you're just going to work 75 half double crochet stitches as evenly as you can around. If you need to change the size of your beanie, you're going to uh, increase or decrease this number in multiples of three. So you want a multiple of three for this first round of our beanie. So go ahead and work 75 half double crochet stitches all the way around. When you come all the way around on your round one, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. For round two, we're going to continue working in the same direction and you're going to start by chaining three. This will count as a half double crochet and a chain one. You're then going to half double crochet into the same stitch as joining, so at the base of your chain. This is going to be your first half double crochet V-stitch. You're then going to skip the next two stitches and work a half double crochet V-stitch in the next stitch. To work the half double crochet V-stitch, work a half double crochet, chain one, and half double crochet back into the same stitch. Skip the next two stitches and work a half double crochet V stitch into the next stitch. You're going to repeat this all the way around. Skip the next two stitches and half double crochet V stitch into the next stitch. When you come all the way around, we're going to join with a slip stitch 
into our first stitch. When you come around at the end of round two, you'll have two stitches remaining. Skip those two stitches and then join with a slip stitch into the second chain of that starting chain three. So into the top of what would be the half double crochet. You're then going to drop your color A and we're going to pick up our color B and what I do when I pick it up is my color A is still on my hook, place the color B on my hook and I'm going to pull it through. I'm going to pull it through the chain one space of this first V stitch. So we're joining our color B yarn with a slip stitch into that first chain one space. You're then going to chain four and this counts as a double crochet stitch and a chain one. Next double crochet back into that same space that you joined your color B into. Your color A we're just going to leave it attached hanging down here we're going to pick it up when we come around. You're then going to work double crochet V stitches in each chain one space all the way around. So skip the next two double crochets and into this next chain one space, work a double crochet, chain one, and double crochet back into the same space. Repeat that all the way around in the next chain one space, double crochet, chain one, and double crochet all the way around. When you come all the way around in your round three, uh, you, I have one V stitch remaining and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to my color A in the final double crochet of this V stitch. So I've worked a double crochet, chain one, one more double crochet, but I'm switching to color A. So I'm going to yarn over with my color B, insert my hook, yarn over, drop a loop, yarn over and pull through two, then drop your color B, again we're going to leave it attached, pick up your color A that was hanging down in behind, place it on your hook and pull through. You can then join into the third stitch of that starting chain four with a slip stitch. There is a little bit you can see coming up through here right now a little bit of color A, but just in one moment we're going to work over it so you're not going to see that at all. For round four, we're going to chain one now working with our color A and working over the space directly below where we joined and into the space two rounds below, we're going to work a V stitch. So we're going to yarn over working over top of the space that we've joined in, insert your hook into that space two rows below, yarn over, draw up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, yarn over and pull through two more. You're going to repeat that, uh, chain one and then work the final double crochet of your V-stitch in that space two rows below. I'm going to work my chain stitch, there we go. Now work a double crochet. So you've worked a V stitch into the space two rows below. You're then going to skip the next V stitch and into the next space two rounds below work another V stitch working over top of the space in your color B. So over top insert your hook in that space down below double crochet chain one and double crochet. You're going to repeat this all the way around. Skip the next V stitch into the space two rounds below, 
work a V stitch. And repeat. All the way around and we're going to be once again picking up our color B at the end of this round. When you come all the way around at the end of round four, you're going to join with a slip stitch into the top of this first stitch. We're then going to, just as we did uh, for round two, we're going to join our color B once again into the chain one space of that first V stitch. So insert your hook, drop your color A, pick up your color B and place it on your hook and pull through so that it's on the inside of this chain one space. You're then going to chain four and then once again work V stitches in each space, chain one space, all the way around. So for the rest of the body of our beanie until we make uh, the decreases up at the top, we are going to repeat rounds three and four eight more times. So this is rounds five through to 20. Repeat rounds three and four eight more times. And then for round 21, you're going to repeat round three once more with your color B, okay? So go ahead, work rounds five through to 21, repeating rounds three and four and then meet me back here and we will start the decrease of our beanie. At the end of round 21, this is what your work will look like from the beginning. You'll have ended off on a round three and have switched back to your color A. For round 22, we're going to use our color A and just as we did before, we're going to work a V stitch over the space that we joined in and into the space two rounds below work one V stitch then going to skip the next V stitch and work a V stitch in the space two rows between row two rows below between the next two V stitches you want to do this three more times. So there's one, and skip the next V stitch in the next space, two rounds below, work a V stitch. There's two, three, we have three. Once you've worked three V stitches, so you'll have a total of four, and you're going to skip the next V stitch and in the next space you're simply going to work a half double crochet. Skip the next V stitch in the next space two rounds below work a V stitch and you're going to do that four times. Once you have worked four V stitches, half double crochet into the next space, two rounds below, in the space between the next two V stitches. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Work four V stitches and then a half double crochet into the next space. All the way around, and we're going to um, pick up our color B for the next round. When you come all the way around at the end of round 22, you'll end off with your one final half double crochet stitch. You're then going to join with a slip stitch into the top of your first stitch. Next, we're going to pick up our color B here through the chain one space of that first V stitch. So place it on your hook and pull through. 
You're then going to chain four and work a double crochet in the same space to work your V-stitch. V-stitch in the next chain one space and then in each of the next two chain one spaces. When you come to your half double crochet stitch, you're simply going to skip it. So ignoring that half double crochet into the next chain one space, work a V stitch. You're going to work your V stitches in each chain one space all the way around skipping the half double crochet stitches as you come to them. When you come to your final V stitch, switch back to your color A. For round 24, you're working with color A again, chain one, this time when you work your V-stitch, we're going to be working our V-stitch into the half double crochet between the two V-stitches two rounds below. So bring your hook down into the top of the half double crochet stitch, work a V-stitch. You're then going to skip the next V-stitch half double crochet into the next space two rounds below or sorry v-stitch into this space two rounds below skip the next v-stitch and work a v-stitch into the space two rounds below between the next two stitches you're then going to work you'll have three v-stitches work a half double crochet into the next space two rounds below we're going to repeat v-stitch this time working that first the, the first V stitch of this set of three into the top of your half double crochet stitch work one V stitch skip the next V stitch into the space work a V stitch do that one more time skip the next V stitch into the space two rounds below work a V stitch followed by a half double crochet worked into the next space between the next two V stitches two rounds below. You're going to repeat that all the way around. When you come back to your first stitch we're going to once again pick up our color B in that chain one space. For round 25, as you did for round 23, you've slip stitched and joined into the chain one space of that first V-stitch, chain four, double crochet back into the same space, which counts as a V-stitch. You're then going to work one V-stitch in each chain one space all the way around skipping that half double crochet stitch when you come to it. So into your chain one spaces, V stitch, there's a half double crochet here. I'm going to skip it and work directly into the next chain one space. Repeat that all the way around, switching back to your color A in that final stitch before joining with a slip stitch into your first stitch. For round 26, chain one, working with your color A once again. We're going to begin round 26 by working our V stitch down into the top of that half double crochet directly below where we joined. So into that half double crochet stitch, work one V-stitch. Chain 
and v-stitch into the next space two rounds below so skip the next v-stitch and work a v-stitch skip the next v-stitch half double crochet into the next space two rounds below and now repeat into the next half double crochet two rounds below work a v-stitch skip the next v-stitch v-stitch into the space two rounds below between the next two stitches skip the next v-stitch into that space work a half double crochet repeat that all the way around picking up your color B once again in that cha first chain one space For round 27 with your color B, chain 4, we're working in that first chain 1 space, double crochet back into the chain 1 space to make a V-stitch. You're then going to V-stitch in each chain 1 space all the way around, just as we did before, we're going to skip that half double crochet and work directly into the next chain one space. When you come all the way around switch back to your color A in that final stitch. For round 28, we are working with our color A, chain 1, into that half double crochet directly below where we joined. We're going to work our first V-stitch. Skip the next V-stitch into the space two rounds below. We're going to work a half double crochet. Repeat that all the way around. Into the top of your next half double crochet two rounds below, work one V-stitch. Skip the next V-stitch and into the space two rounds below between the next two stitches, work a half double crochet. Repeat that all the way around, joining with a slip stitch and switching back to your color B in the space, in the chain one space. For round 29, you've joined your color B in the chain one space. We're going to chain four, work a double crochet into that same space, which counts as a V stitch. Skip the next half double crochet and into your next chain one space, work one V stitch. You're going to repeat that all the way around. Skip the half double crochet, V stitch into your next chain one space. In our final stitch, we're going to switch back to our color A. When you've come all the way around at the end of round 29 and you've joined your color A, you can then fasten off your color B. We just have one final round left to work here. For round 30, you're going to chain one and we're going to reach down and work two half double crochet stitches into each half double crochet stitch two rounds below. So there's one half double crochet and then two. Skip the next V stitch into your next half double crochet stitch two rounds below. Work two half double crochet stitches and two. You're going to repeat this all the way around 
working your half double crochet stitches into the half double crochet two rounds below working in between the V stitches from your previous round. When you come all the way around you can join with a slip stitch into that first stitch. I've come all the way around, join with a slip stitch into your first stitch. You can then fasten off your color A, but leave a little bit of a long tail. You should have a small opening here up at the top of your hat. We're going to sew that closed, taking the long tail threading it through your yarn needle and then I like to turn the hat so that it is inside out. You're then going to take your yarn needle and simply weave in and out through the tops of the stitches of your final round and you're going to work all the way around the opening at the top of your beanie. So simply keep going all the way around. Once you come back to where you started, all you have to do to pull that is just simply pull that closed. You can then secure it. I like to tie a little bit of a knot before weaving in your ends. Once you've woven in your ends, you can fasten off, trim off any other tails that you may have there on your beanie, turn your beanie right side out, you should have a nice star shaped top there, fold up your brim, if you have a foldable brim, and that's it. So that's all there is to working your Lexington beanie. Enjoy it, and uh, thank you so much for joining me, and I look forward to seeing you later on for the matching scarf pattern. Until then, happy crocheting. Bye.